confused with joyous. I think that I think that's the recording. Yeah. Yeah. I become infused with joyous Judaica. Um, so so bear with us because we're going to be moving into three different areas of the home and studio. Keep going. Okay. Uh, Dino's making hand signals at us. Um, and at the end, it'll be about 45 minutes uh, talk that Nina's going to give on the different art pieces and her process in these different in these three different areas where she lives and works. And then at the end, after 45 minutes, we'll open it up for questions. And uh, uh, so that's that's essentially the program. And I'm going to turn it over to Nina and um, and um, give some introduction of yourself. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a real pleasure for me today to be able to bring you into our home and my art studio. Um, what I'll be presenting to you is work of a lifetime. I've been a professional artist for 36, 37 years. Uh, San Francisco native. I studied architecture at Berkeley and came to Sonoma County in 1974, where I was a county planner and I have always wanted to be an artist since I was nine years old, but I was told by my parents and school counselors and everybody that that's not a way to make a living and I should do something practical. So I liked <laughs> art and science. I started out in design at uh, Davis. And anyway, finally, when our second child, we have two children, uh, Lisa is um, the eldest and Peter is, um, turned 37 recently, and I know that for sure, not only because he's my son, <laughs> but also because that's when I started uh, doing art. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I have on the wall here three of my favorite pieces, so I'm going to go through those pieces uh, one by one, and then we'll hop into uh, the Seven Sacred Species Gallery. So this is my favorite piece of all time, and I cannot believe, but I did this 31 years ago. This oh. piece has been reproduced uh, around the world. Um, you may have seen it uh, year before last oh, on yes. the cover of the J. Okay. And also here it is on a, on a um, Paula cover. And this was done mm. by the Jewish Educational Service of North America in New York as a gift to their large donors. So the reason I'm showing you this is because a lot of, of the rest of the presentation today will be about Torah mantles that I make. And it's a rather unique process. Um, in this situation, Sam, could you hold the other yes. one? In this situation, you can see that I painted a painting. The painting was digitized and put onto fabric. In this case, it's silk. There's one piece of silk that is sewn or appliqued onto another piece of silk. And the reason this is important is it sparked a whole different way of making Torah mantles that look much more graphic and are very unique. So that's and that. you created the process yourself. And I kind of I in, I started this process because somebody contacted me with a very short deadline, and this was I'm going to interrupt for a moment. I don't know something if... that I figured out. And so about the piece itself. Dino uh, and Sandy and Nina, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, your bandwidth is low. I just wanted to mention that you're you're freezing a little bit. Um, and that's so that's, I don't know if that's your internet, but um, keep going. Just, I, I might pause <laughs> or mention it if it really uh, breaks up too much, um, but okay. keep going. You seem to be okay at the moment. Just as long as the participants know we're in a, you're a guy in that area and we're doing the best we can so okay oh, okay do you know is the is the camera focused on this piece? Mm -hmm. okay yes we're fine so this, this piece was created in 1992 
I thought about it for over a year. It's really a memorial piece for my mother who died unexpectedly in 1991. And she survived Nazi Germany and came to the United States in 1936 and was a wonderful woman. And I wanted to make a piece of art that was exquisite and I didn't know how I was going to do it and so I thought about it and made drawings for a whole year and so I wanted the colors to be very <coughs> Mediterranean like and um, it's a very joyous piece but actually what it celebrates is the fact that my mother grew up in Berlin and her Judaism was underground and mm -hmm. here this statement of it's a tree of life to those who grasp it of course, refers to the Torah as the tree of life. And then Chai in here in Hebrew means uh, to life. And so um, there you have it. <laughs> the next piece here. Well, these three pieces represent really important events in my life. And in the year 2000, our daughter Lisa went to Israel for a year uh, with Young Judea Year Course sponsored by Hadassah. And while we were in New York on our way to Israel to visit her, I retrieved a phone message asking me to join a competition to create the logo artwork for the Two Life Festival, a Jewish art festival that was in Palo Alto for, it was in 13 years, this was in 2001. So this actually, I think there's more than a couple hundred pieces. Yeah. Uh, my collages are very different than a lot of people, a lot of, they're very structured and um, I think that reflects my background in architecture. So what I was trying to do was put as many symbols in here as possible. And we had climbed Masada when we were in Israel. This was right when we came back. And so this is half of a floor tile with some Roman design. So the tile was twice as big. And I love these hearts here. So this part looks like it's the sand and the surf and the sea from California, because that's where we are. But actually it comes from a Roman design found in Masada. And it is collage. This is collage, correct. So if you turn this on the side, you can see on the bird's wings, oh, okay. it says Shalom. The entrance to the old city is a door where it says hi. Here's the dome of the rock, the wailing wall or Western Wall, Italian Cypress, a palm tree, and in the upper reach of the palm tree, there's a shin. The stars in the sky are three stars of David. So this was transformed from this to this as a print because for the Two Life Festival, which this was chosen to be the logo artwork, they wanted something that would fit good on a t-shirt and postcards and things. But for today, I really wanted to show you the whole piece. <laughs> And then moving over here, oh, yes, I guess I can go this way. This piece was done in August of 2020, right in the middle of the worst part of life. And I reviewed yes. 72 page report. The group concludes, quote, there is absolutely what? Some, some interruption. Come on, just keep going. Oh, okay. Um, a reminder to everyone to please mute yourselves. Yeah, I think it's other people. Okay. It's other people. Continue. You're good. Okay. So in August of uh, 2020, there was the glass fire, and um, it was a terrible time with the pandemic, and you all know what happened. We all lived through it. But we, we planted our garden early that year in March, and so by August, we had a really full garden, and I decided I wanted to do something really, really happy because everybody was really depressed. Um, but Dino and I, the person behind the camera, we've been uh, together for uh, more than four decades, almost five, and here we are. This is me, this is Dino, <laughs> and we are dancing in our sacred species garden. And you see um, olives and grapes. We have all of this in our backyard, figs and pomegranates. And um, it didn't turn, it didn't initially want, I figured out to be this way, but this was going to be wheat. So I did all of these cutouts. I gave myself a very quick time period to complete them. And then we actually, even though we weren't evacuated, we left town for a week because I was having upper respiratory problems. So I just covered this up 
and then came back a week later and spent time meticulously gluing it all. And I was really surprised to find out, I, this was coincidental. This orange is one of my favorite colors. So I, these were all from separate pieces that I had painted before I did this. And it looked to me like, oh my gosh, this, it was lightning sparked fires. Mm -hmm. And this wheat then becomes lightning. Oh, yes. Or, you know, yeah. it's like a hidden meaning. And here he is kicking the fire or juggling it away. And I'm just like <clears throat> dancing above the whole thing because we survived. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the major events in my life, whether they're <clears throat> happy or terribly stressful, I transform them into art. Well, I was going to go over here. How much time I have? Okay. So if you want a real tour of my studio in person, Please come to Arch Rails. This is the piece that will, this is last year's catalog, but this is the piece that's in the catalog. And um, it's the last weekend in September and the first weekend in October. There's 120 artists in Sonoma County. You can go for free from studio to studio. And I hope you will come visit me. And now we're gonna go into uh, the next room. So here we are at my other two most important pieces. And um, you may recognize them as the designs for the Torah mantles at Shamre Torah. So Shamre Torah in, I think, 2010 uh, made a new Torah. We hired a scribe and the whole community participated writing some letters. And then the art committee at Shamre Torah had a competition to design a new cover or a Torah mantle, a cloth covering for the new Torah. This piece won that competition and the, the art committee liked it so much that they, they have two Torahs and they asked me if I would do a companion piece. So this piece, is seven sacred species. And I didn't even realize so much before I did this, that the pomegranate is a symbol for the Torah. Mm. The reason for that is there's supposedly 613 seeds in the pomegranate and there's 613 <laughs> commandments in the Torah. And so that's how the symbology came about. So here, what this is representative is the um, blue lines on the uh, Atali or the Israeli flag. And you have, uh, the sun has, I don't know if you can see this, but there's 12 trapezoids, which represent the 12 tribes of Israel. This date palm in ancient days, honey was from a date, date honey. And the rest is kind of obvious. There's um, olives, grapes, figs, pomegranates, um, and wheat and barley. Wheat and barley look just the same. And um, although we have five of the seven sacred species in our backyard and they serve as my models, these are my models for, for the wheat and barley. So this was exquisitely uh, needle pointed by Marcia Gladstone. Um, it took Marcia um, a year, five to 10 hours a day, every day to make these exquisite designs. And there's a video about this making of these that is on the homepage of my website, which is ninabonos.com, N-I-N-A-B-O-N-O-S.com. So you can see it there. Marcia and I got to uh, really develop a good friendship through this and it's um, been kind of amazing. Um, last year, Stephanie Kramer left Shamri Torah and she collected Hamsas and the Social Action Committee um, commissioned me to make this piece for Stephanie and I wanted it to be representative of the Torah mantles. So here you have a Hamsa with some doves on either side and the seven sacred species are here. And you may have seen this on the cover of the J um, last year for Rosh Hashanah. 
And this piece has been reproduced. I have smaller prints of most of my pieces. So these top three pomegranates, I call this pomegranate trio. This has been on the cover of the resource directory from the J in San Francisco and also the Archbishop of um, Chicago put this on a, uh, a cover of theirs. And did you know that pomegranates are a symbol in Christianity as well as Judaism and many yeah. other cultures around the world? Mm -hmm. Nina, so, you, might, you might mention that was the gift given to Jelena at her tribute as well. That's, that's true. Um, last year, I did this piece, which mm -hmm. is a pomegranate tree fashioned after the one in our backyard. It's uh, over 360 individual pieces with 36 pomegranates. And there are shins on the ends of some of the branches. Those are in blue. And... Um, when I did this, it was late in the season because in Sonoma County, we, the pomegranates ripen late. It was actually done during Hanukkah, I remember, because there's nine leaves down here. Mm. And this, I'll be telling you about a project in a minute, but um, I think I'll move on here first. So this is another piece that I did for the JCC of Sonoma County. In 1993, there was a Jewish women's gathering and um, the, the theme of the gathering was Jewish women saving the healing the world, saving the world, living our passion. And although I have really short hair in the last 15 years or so, <laughs> I had long hair most of my life. This is not meant to look like me. It's supposed to be every woman. And a lot of people make comments about looking like Frida Kahlo. Um, anyway, here I am between the rows of the grapes. I'm wearing my favorite earrings uh, with Hamsas. And I live in Santa Rosa, those are roses. California, the poppy is our state flower. Here's high. And my tikkun alum, my way to save the world is to create beauty to enrich other people's lives. So that's what my life is, other than my family, uh, that's what my life is dedicated to. So now I'm going to move ahead to another project. Um, these tour mantles and the video I was speaking to you about were put on the internet. And one day in April 2016, I got an email late at night from a cantor at a synagogue in Vancouver, British Columbia. And she really liked the tour mantles that I did for Shamrai Torah, I wanted to know if I could do six Torah mantles, everyday mantles for uh, Beth Israel, as well as two arc curtains for their chapel and the sanctuary. And so some of these pieces behind you, Dino, are, um, they did an adaptation of the pomegranate from Shamrai Torah. And then I took each one of these that were in the seven sacred species and I did them individually. This is from an etching that I did. And the rest of these are watercolors. So this is figs. We had a fig tree in our backyard. We have grapes, a couple of grapevines. And there are symbols in all of these. Here you can see, if you look, this is the map of the state of Israel. If you look closely here, you can see um, a seven branched menorah. And then my other symbol that I include a lot of times is a heart. So can you show these? So then there's um, wheat and barley and dates. And just a few months ago, I was contacted. So eight years later to, by uh, the same people at, um, let me get some water. Mm -hmm. So I just completed this project yesterday. <laughs> so I am now making six tour mantles and an art curtain for uh, Beth Israel in Vancouver again for high holidays. Here, and so for high holidays, we traditionally see a lot of white and they're supposed to be calming. And so this is a version of this with basically 
three different colors. There's gold and copper uh, accents, and then you can see the rest. And they're all slightly different sizes, depending upon what size the tour mantle is. Here's one of my favorites, which is um, olives. And if you look down here, you'll see the letters high again. <coughs> so these, um, oh, I forgot a step here. Here's some proofs from the first round of printing for these tour mantles. And it all runs together because they're proofs. So I found a fab, I made these paintings. I found a fabric printer in South San Francisco and we printed these panels. So the panel was each one separately. The panels were then rolled up and shipped in a tube to a Torah mantle maker in New York. And he and I conferred over the phone and through emails. And I was telling him what color velvet to put on the back of these. And there's also pictures of that synagogue on my website if you'd like to see it. So the difference with this time around, I don't know if you can see this. So my job in the last few months was to simplify these designs. So this one on my left is the original everyday Torah mantle. And this is the high holiday Torah mantle. And again, there's symbols, whether you can see them or not, in all of these, uh, there's always with the numbers of fruits or leaves, there's things like seven for the days of the week, 10 for the 10 commandments, 12 for the 12 tribes of Israel. And on this one, I was really upset <laughs> because it turns out there was 13 leaves, or maybe that was the best one. <laughs> This one has um, 13 leaves instead of 12. And so my daughter was here when I said that. And I said, oh my God, I put the wrong number of leaves in here. She goes, that's, that's fine. There's 13 aspects of God. Oh my goodness. So um, <laughs> let's see, what other symbols? So I did the same thing here with the menorah and, mm -hmm. and the, the map of Israel. So this is the new one just completed. And these will all be sewn um onto white backgrounds so they i actually just sent the digital files to the people in vancouver and i'm going to work with a printer there over the phone and internet to to proof them um, and to make sure everything is going well and on the wheat slash barley um i don't know if you can see this very well but there are shins on the top of most of these, six out of the seven uh, wheats. So this was a, the most challenging of all of these designs because the original design, which was really vibrant, like my work, really depends upon the blue background and it's the, 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 vit the vibrance is the contrast. Mm -hmm. So that was a real problem. <laughs> We're still proofing this, I proofed this like three or four times and changing some things to make it really read. Because what happens is you may see this now, you know, you're six feet from the camera, but think of sitting in a synagogue that can hold 1200 people and sitting at the back of the synagogue. And so I'm wanting something that's calm, but really reads. And so this was a, it was a challenge. And this is the date. And then for the art curtain, I did a version of my um, pomegranate tree of life. This will be 50 inches high and 80 inches wide where the original piece is more of a square. So what I did here is I just um, I put on a few more leaves and that was digitally interpreted. And so now I'm trying to show that the white space is really restful. Um, so you'll open up the, the curtain and then behind that, you'll see these, these uh, tour mantles. Um, so what else am I gonna talk about here? I think I'll show you a little bit about my process for doing these tour mantles. So I go out into my backyard and find something from the species that I'm painting about and so we have a pygmy date palm in the backyard. Um, 
And I was flabbergasted. So one of the things at the top of this design is this curly Q kind of stuff that looks like wavy hair. And that's actually this. Um, then I went to farmer's market and there, you know, the dates that are grown around the world are different. I never really realized there's many different <laughs> kinds of dates. So at the farmer's market, there's somebody from uh, Southern California who comes every other week and I've been buying and eating all kinds of different dates. So our dates that we think of are more oblong and these are really round. And I was flabbergasted. I looked on this little pygmy date palm that we've had for six or eight years. And they're actually small little dates that they're very tiny. They're not going to mature for the first time. Palm. For the first time. <laughs> so here's some drawings that I did under the, the um, I don't know if you can see this, but just to get the flow of the way the leaves are and to get some real freshness and spontaneity in it. And then I made a drawing and you can see, this was the first one. And I didn't really, I'm used to doing a lot of grapes and I think this got to look too much like grapes. I was looking at some photographs. Um, and so I wanted to have some symbolism in this because there's symbolism in all the rest of these. And so I found that there was something with 70 um, attributes of the Torah. So I decided I wanted to cut this down and make 70, <laughs> 70 dates. So I just cut it off. I numbered all of them with tiny little numbers. And um, the design that I eventually came up with, which, I, which you've seen. So to me, it's the story behind all of this. Now we're gonna move on into my studio to show you my current project. So I was contacted um, the water about a year ago. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, by people at uh, Peninsula Temple Beth El in San Mateo. I just have to be careful not to spill my water on the watercolor. And they wanted me to design five tour mantles for, um, can you go over to here? Five tour mantles, four for the sanctuary and one for the chapel. So um, I worked with a committee like I do often, but I like to work usually with one person. This was a very, a very nice committee of three, um, congregants, all with all women, all with design uh, affinity. And they were really wonderful. It's just a long process when you do it that way. So we talked about um, what kind of attributes they wanted in their Torah mantles. And they wanted the Torah mantles to express a sense of community and supporting one another and liveliness and uh, generational continuity. And we didn't really know what the theme was going to be. And we went through a series of meetings with the rabbi for him to explain um, things about the synagogue. Um, here's a close-up of the, the open arc with sayings on either side. And the sayings relate to the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was of wood. And so we kept talking and meeting and we, they decided um, a few months ago that they wanted to have the theme be trees of life, which is just, you know, I do a lot of trees. And so I'm just, I, I get goosebumps even now <laughs> when I say it, I'm overjoyed that I can do this with the trees. So um, I made a series uh, so what well, you're gonna do trees, but how are you going to do trees? Can you move over here? So I came up with four different themes and I did um, drawings for each one of those. The first theme was the, the seasons of the pomegranate tree of life, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And they all have lots of roots going down because that's what Judaism is. The roots are really important. How did we get to be where we are? 
And then another one had four um, with the Torah mantles all lined up in a row, expressions of olives. And here you have olive branches and a dove flying off and you have a mature olive plant. And then you have just a, a little baby olive plant. Um, so this one didn't work out because of the fact that their Torahs are up on pedestals and it, that, that didn't work. So that was ruled out. Another one was, I thought of four of the trees of life, big olive, date, and pomegranate. And they decided that they didn't want that one. They wanted something more unique because this could be in any synagogue anywhere. And then I came up with the idea of native trees of San Mateo County. So I grew up in San Mateo County. So I not only really love San Mateo, but I know the geography and the um, plant species. So I picked the four major um, trees that I thought were important. Maple, oak, fir, and redwood. Well, this was the one that uh, they liked the best. And um, after we were doing these meetings, mostly on Zoom, we had a couple, two or three in-person meetings. Uh, in discussions with the executive director, she was telling me, well, that's really great, but we also have um, olive trees growing on our campus. And right when on the median strip, right off of Alameda de las Colgas, when you drive into the temple parking lot, there's a whole line of flowering plum. And she said, couldn't we include those? And I thought that was good because it would introduce a lot more different colors. So what we ended up with is a combination of her suggestion and the native tree. So that's when we come to this. So I did those smaller, bigger, and this, now I'm working on the final drawings or paintings. So I've got, and they changed in a prior meeting to this when I made other drawings, they didn't like the ground line. So I decided, I am always trying to put um, words in here. They didn't like, I had, this was gonna be eternal and this was gonna be for, uh, for every time there is a season because you have, um, I have pomegranates on the brain. <laughs> you have uh, cherry blossoms for just a, a short time period. So when these were shown to them at a meeting, I decided not to finish the ground line because that was still under discussion. Anyway, these were the designs that were approved. And in the top here, there's uh, menorahs that have seven branches. On the final drawing, I'm gonna make that a little bit more obvious. And the roots, um, if if trees are together in a forest, they share nourishment through their roots. And that's what is symbolic for the synagogue. And here, again, there's shins on some of the leaves or uh, branches. And you can't really see it in here, but I have studied very carefully these little blossoms and there's gonna be stars of David in the blossoms. Oh, good, perfect. And this was from this fanciful design that the rabbi really liked and I loved because it was more whimsical than the rest. So this is an olive tree and there's a shin right here and there's a high right there. I was thinking of the original tree that I showed you. And you have the, the sapling, the baby tree sharing uh, nourishment through the roots. And then you have a dove a piece. So these, when you blow this up, I realized that when things are small, it's hard to make them very detailed. This is the size that it will be at. And so I realized that um, I needed to study the leaves. I know how to do all of the leaves, but I just, it's hard to make it so small. So I will take these and I will really study them and make this a little bit more realistic. So my, pro oh, the last one, let's see, two more. So this um, is the oak tree, again, the mature and the youngster. And this was a design that I had done in etched glass for the front door of a home that we lived in um, for 30 years. And I really liked that design. I just had to change the proportions because that's really important. You know, I can have a list of exact measurements uh, for the, the um, Excuse me. 
for the Torah mantles. <clears throat> Can you say what a Torah mantle is for lay people? Oh, okay. Um, anyway, I'm, this was a challenge because I'm trying to pick up, this will have small little dots in here. So I've got the same kind of thing going on and there'll be some hearts and uh, Swords of David in there as well. Um, and for the fifth one that's in the chapel, I took leaves or branches from all of the others, and that'll be the combination. So the Torah mantle or the Torah covering is cloth, and people think of it almost like a wedding dress. It's a very fancy garment, but there's other considerations. It needs to be really uh, durable. You know, it gets touched by a lot of people that have oils on their hands. And I have an example over here of this process that's probably easier to understand. So these are two other Torah mantles that I made for a synagogue in Napa. Um, and these were made into wall hangings. When I do this, I try to get some extras for myself. And then this was just like that Paula cover that I showed you. Um, well, this was actually printed as one piece, but this looks, it's a polyester twill, think, think dockers, so it's very durable, and um, it looks like silk, but it really isn't. So here's the example, how the colors were just really uh, transformed very well. So I am present, I have uh, somebody who does the scanning for me from the paper version of this in Sebastopol. And then I take that to South San Francisco and I'm there for color proofing and printing. That's what I showed you. And this whole proofing process sometimes goes on for days. And I'm involved with that with, a, with the project I just showed you, making more proofs and more proofs again. But my colors are really important and I put a lot of effort into making them so. Um, so how much time do we have left? Oh, we have. Five minutes? 15. Okay. Minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh. Speeding along. Oh, okay. So here you are. This is where the magic happens. And um, I wanted, to, you know, I spent a lot of my time making color palettes. So here's a color palette for my wheat design in 2014, which I looked at because it was from the same synagogue. We're trying to do the same colors. And um, I can't find the exact one, but I, so these are the ones from 2014. And this is the one from Shamari Torah in 2010. And actually this was started in, uh, this was the pomegranate one in uh, December 2009. So you can imagine trying to do this with somebody over the internet. <laughs> now we have Zoom, but um, so I take pictures of all of these many, 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 many color palettes. And I like this part of it, you know, like um, mm -hmm. it, it's like being a scientist. And the reason I went into architecture was I really like science and art. And so it, it sometimes I remember when I was doing the, the olive one, for those colors that I'm using there, like you can see my whole desk really is arranged with colors. And then I work down low on something. I put a book underneath and I can move this all around. I'm trying to do this whole thing so I don't have to stand up and really take care of my body, which is challenging. Um, so my next step after this is, we're gonna go over here to my fancy makeshift light table. And what I do is I take the design and then I, if there's not a, right now it's the wrong time of the day to do this. I was working on it when the sun was streaming through or I'm known to work really late at night. So I actually can take a light and put, put it on the stoop here and have the light coming through that way. I like this also, even if I, I don't have the space for a really giant light table. But I like this, you know, I'm short, so I'm up here, you know, drawing here like that. Or if I'm down low, I'm sitting down, but I constantly have to figure out ways to make this workable. So what I'm doing, and I don't know if it's possible for you to see this, but I'm making a 
a light pencil outline so I can paint. I guess you can't see it. So that's the next step. And then after that, I will take these drawings that I did and make my own color palette for it. Um, and the drawings that you saw in there, paintings, it takes me a week to two weeks to do each one of those. Um, so are we going to do she's questions? Okay. She's okay. You want to do questions now? Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's something Somebody that. Um, Hi. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Nina and uh, Sandy. Um, I, I, I guess you can hear me. I hope you can. Yes, yes we can. Uh, okay, great. So what I'm going to do, if you're ready to take questions, um, I'm going to, at least on my screen, do a gallery view and I can see all of you now and I can, and you can raise your hands or type your questions. Ray Kaplan has his hand up. Um, and so uh, Ray, I'm going to invite you to speak. If Nina, you're able to take questions, you're more than welcome. Thank okay, you. Thank, it, please. thank you very much, Nina. This is wonderful. You know, I've been in Nina's studio several times and um, this was a, a, a really enjoyable in-depth explanation. I would also share with you that Nina's is a master gardener as well. And the approach to her house in her front yard is just spectacular, as equally as her backyard. So I would encourage you um, during the, the week of um, artist visits in Sonoma to pay that visit to her home. You, you'll be absolutely delighted. Also, if you would like to get, every year I make a special postcard that I send out in the mail to um, people that would like to come to my studio. You, uh, if you would like to get a copy of that postcard, please send me your email address and you can, I mean, not your email address, your street address. So I can send that postcard to you and you can, you can do that through my website. So um, just go there. Just so you know, if everybody wants to look in their chat box on Zoom, I have included the link to Nina's website right there. So you can click on it right now from your Zoom and just make sure that you have it. Otherwise, we'll definitely send a follow-up email so that you have that information as well. Great. Gotcha. Um, does, uh, should we move on to the next question? Sure. Thanks, Ray, for your compliments. Heartfelt. <laughs> um, if there's nobody raising their hand, I, I could definitely ask several questions, Nina, and then maybe that will spurn the, um, the more questions from, from the peanut gallery, not that you are peanuts. I'm not exactly sure why they've ever had that expression. Um, could you talk a little bit about your medium? I know that you have talked about sketching and watercolors, and sometimes it looks like you've got cutouts of things. And so I'm wondering if you could talk about the types of paints you have in front of you and a little bit more specifically on how you go from sketching something and the paints on them to the finished product. Sure. Um, well, a lot of these Torah mantles, since there's specific imagery that people are requesting, there's a lot of detailed drawings that come. And sometimes the drawings take a very long time, you know, more than the painting because it's also my mind thinking about all this. When I start working on a design project, <laughs> it's with me 24 hours a day. I paint these things. I've been meditating twice a day for 49 years. And uh, when I come out of meditation or sometimes even during it, I can't turn it off. I'm designing these things. So that's when I, I might just finish meditating and say, aha, I thought I solved the problem. This is what I should do. Or, um, Oh, the day I was painting those dates, um, I had worked and changed the color. Many of those, these drawings that you, or paintings that you see, they look like they're acrylic, but to get those vibrant colors like that in watercolor, sometimes there's anywhere from two to five coats of paint. And if you think it's easy to paint those really vibrant colors, leaving a white background like that, that's 30, six, 37 years of practice and knowing all the colors. And I love, I love making these things. And then when I paint, I always have something like this next to me to make sure that the, you know, just a few brush strokes before I put it on the paper to make sure it's really true to the color. Because when, when I'm doing a commission like that and the, the person who is um, commissioning me, they oftentimes they really wanna know what it is. 
lots of people say, well, I don't want to tie your hands behind your back and just do what you want to do, but it's not that case with these tormentals. Um, so I mostly use watercolor. I do use a lot of gold in my work and sometimes <laughs> copper, and that's always um, acrylic. Um, for um, some of these paintings, especially right now, I can't remember which one. <laughs> I was using a mask out um, and there's many different kinds. So it's something that you draw on or I ended up using um, actually something. Oh, here it is. It's very fine. It's an applicator bottle for a, a, a mask out. Mm. I haven't used this for a few weeks, so it's almost stuck. So it has a little, little tip like this and it's, it's, um, it's challenging, but it works. Um, and I use a lot of colored pencils, but mostly it's watercolor. Um, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it gave a good background. Um, we've got a couple questions now. Ellie Cohen's been raising her hand for a while, and then I see <laughs> Cynthia Levy and then Ray Kaplan. So let's go in that order. Ellie, then Cynthia, then Ray. Go ahead, Ellie. Is she muted? She is um, muted. There we go. There I'm we go. I'm sorry. I am looking at you. I cannot see very clearly. I had cataract surgery on both my eyes this morning. Oh, and that's why I didn't join earlier because I just haven't been with it. But I wanted yeah. to just say how much I enjoyed working on the first mantles, I think, that you'd ever created were the ones that we put into Shomre Torah. Yeah, I like I to hear at the beginning to hear about those. And that Marsha and I spent, I don't know how many hours matching those beautiful colors that you created, going well, you to yarn did, shops. You and guys did such an exquisite job. You know, like I only, without you two, I, they would have never turned out the way they did. And they turned out so beautiful. It's led to all of this work, work for me. And so I they really look, owe a debt yeah. of gratitude to you too, my friends. They are beautiful and it was so, it was wonderful to work on them, but it was so difficult because we had to match your colors perfectly and in order to do so. And sometimes we took three and four strands of different yarns to put them together to make sure that we had the right color. And it just, it's one of the most beautiful things. And I, I always, I've got in my bedroom, the, the uh, print of the one that I worked on sitting there and I stare at it and I enjoy it very much. I just want to say thank you for every bit of thought and heart that you put into all of this. It's just great. Thank you. I don't know if you remember, but one time when we were working on that, you and Marcia and I went to lunch at Max's and we were talking about the project and I realized that I would never, once I finished these, I would never really be able to handle them because mm -hmm. I had not had a bat mitzvah uh -huh. because they weren't doing that for girls at, you know, at my age. So mm -hmm. at age 60 in uh, May 21st, 2011, I had a bat mitzvah. Marsha was my tutor. Oh, she's She worked amazing. with me patiently. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people that do that as an adult, they do it with a whole group of people. And I did the whole thing and I was so proud of myself. So that, that ex, the Hebrew training really helped me uh, since then too, with this work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was a wonderful Thank experience. Thank you so much, Ellie, for your wonderful words. And Nina, um, I believe the next person was Cynthia. Please go ahead, Cynthia. Hi, Nina. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> <It's> Cindy. <laughs> I, um, I just want to say I've, listen to you talk about your artwork, but this was really a spectacular explanation with so many pieces and to hear your process and see so much of the beauty that you have in your home. But I, it, it just is so clear to me how by putting your art in a Beit Knesset for so many people to appreciate and be able to see, and as you said, touch, you, you bring the beauty, uh, the beauty aspect of Judaism into people's lives. So, I mean, that's really a mitzvah special, special for you. But I do have a question. And my question is that I see that your 
basic medium is watercolor and paper. Uh, and and um, so you produce these beautiful uh, pieces of art for people's walls. And but how was it just a uh, request from a synagogue that spurred you to put your art on fabric? Because they're special. I would imagine special challenges when you go into another uh, uh, different materials. And yeah. I didn't quite understand how do you get your art? I know it's I, I, I know it's transferred onto fabric, but who sews it? Who puts it on the mantle? How, how is that all achieved? Yeah, so for um... The first two designs that I did, the ones here behind me and the ones that I did for Beth Israel in Vancouver, um, we I, I had them printed out of printer in South San Francisco. Um, the one that I just did for Vancouver, I'm sending them the digital file and a member of their congregation owns a printing and embroidery company. So they are going to be taking care of that. For the one that I'm working on now with um, Beth Israel, I mean, with um, Beth L in San Mateo, I'm actually the contractor for all of that. <laughs> and they had somebody in mind that did work for them at a hoopa many years ago. I actually did another project for Beth. L 15 years ago, a big piece for their meditation room. And they really like to know the people that they're working with. And so I was, you know, so we were put together just by phone and email. I've never actually met um, the lady that's going to be sewing them, but we've done meticulous measurements. We've been, you know, now Zoom has really helped artists in a lot of ways because um, this lady, Carol Atia, who is doing the sewing, she lives in Pleasanton. So she went to the synagogue for uh, many hours on one day a few months ago and was taking measurements. And, um, you know, there's at the top of the tour mantle, there are wooden staves. So you need a, what's called a headboard, which is kind of like a donut with the two holes cut out of it. And then there's <clears> some <throat> wooden rings. So I scour, you know, I sent emails out I have possible vendors for that in Israel and also in Arizona. And I might tap into somebody here in Sonoma County. If anybody has any suggestions, I need to get that going immediately. Um, and then Carol and I are gonna go uh, to Brightex Fabrics or, or actually another place in uh, Berkeley and pick out the fabric together. And, um, so it's a team of people that does it. And I am responsible for all of that, whether I do it or not, I have to work with the people, find the right people. It's a whole nother part of this. You know, the painting of the tour mantles, if you can do it visually, let's say the whole process is this big. Although the painting takes weeks and sometimes longer, the painting part is like that, but you really have to be able to work with people be diplomatic. And I think my background in architecture is great for this. And I also used to sew for like, I don't know, 30 years uh, when before from the age of uh, fifth grade till when I what? Oh, I made my own wedding dress. So that's the, the equivalent of making a tournament. And now I never sew if you know, I don't have time. But it's it's a much more involved process and the precise measurements and then um, so I usually worry a lot <laughs> because it's a big responsibility. What if it doesn't turn out? What mm -hmm. if it's the wrong size? Mm -hmm. Especially when I did the first project um, here working with Marsha and um, Ellie was, you know, it was fine because we were sitting right next to each other and we were going at this together. But um, now, Cindy, you know why I never see you? <laughs> <laughs> because I get really involved with all of this and it's such a labor of love and there's so much pride and I have to say Dino's behind the camera here he does and he's not on camera but it's he's such an incredible support and our whole family gets involved with all of this um, in one way or another so this has been great to have you come into my home and be able to explain all of this 
when our trails happens, you know, it's once a year and there's two weekends, but I get kind of lonely because I'm sequestered here, you know, working really hard on all of this and I would really like to be out more, but I have my, I really have a goal to accomplish mm -hmm. these things in my life. And I think mm -hmm. I have something that I really want to offer and it's taken a long time. It's taken a long time, a lot of work and a lot of support from a lot of people to get where I am. And I'm, I'm just keeping, keeping plugging on. And well, I, I want you to know you're in, you're in many people's homes, not only your artwork, but your note cards, because mm -hmm. I look at them all the time. And, uh, uh, need replenishment soon so it, uh, <laughs> I hope it gives you a lot of pleasure that yeah, um, it really does you know the note cards they started when we had two kids at Montgomery High School and uh, they were both in the band the high school band and we wanted to send 60 kids to Washington DC and so right. that was a fundraiser and my note cards have raised over fifty thousand dollars for um kids projects in Sonoma County from uh you know, high school bands to grad night to this, uh, Shamari Torah did some kind of a trip um, and then done that all over the country. That's another thing that I kind of invented because I wanted to support parents and kids and be able to let these kids do what and go places where they should go and not have the parents have to shoulder all the responsibility for that. Um, so anyway, thank you. Hope to see um, you soon, Cindy. Yes. Um, Ray Kaplan has a, a question now. Please, actually, Ray. Actually, I, thank you. I have a few things. First of all, the proof is in the pudding. If anybody could get this done, Nina, you can. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just obvious with all the projects that you have accomplished. Um, the other thing is I want to pay a compliment to, to Nina and to Dino and to Sandy. This is the first time that we've done this camera work on Zoom, moving through somebody's home as we did very successfully. And I know there were some hiccups at the beginning of it, but they certainly resolved. This was very successful yeah. and compliments to, to all of you. And Thank you. The only thing the that's sad. Thing is, the only thing that's sad for me is that I can't see your faces. Yes. You know. I, um, yes. You know, I, Ray, you asked me a question a few moments ago that in the, I forgot to answer completely. Um, as far as my painted uh, my collages, let me take this over there. Um, here's a collage that's in process. Um, it was going to be finished, but I actually took the olive branches that were off. Um, there's another piece that's on display right now for a show that's uh, just opened this week at Corix in downtown Santa Rosa. It was my first um, view of the Parthenon. Um, we went to um, Greece six years ago in 2017. 2017 and came back six weeks before the 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 20 the tubs fires in 2017 mm. Mm. and so i never felt like i really got to integrate that whole experience in my life so i had these this painting that was unfinished for six years it was a collage that kept floating around from all these places to places and i finally finished it a few weeks ago here's a second version of it where I have done a monoprint behind here with um, printer's inks. And then on top of that, there's some, um, it's called, you can't really see it. It's a white lacy paper from Japan. It's called Oguru Lace. And then this, this, the figure here of the Parthenon, actually before we went on this trip to Greece, I had been doing a commission for a woman in Rochester um, it was a cantor who was retiring and it was, I do a lot of donor appreciation gifts for synagogues and Jewish organizations and families that are celebrating 80th birthdays or wedding, um, anniversaries. And I had done, um, I was a, the tabernacle and I did like three different versions and we left on this trip and I wasn't able to clean up. And so I came home and I wanted to start doing something from the trip to Greece. And I was kind of annoyed that I had to spend a day cleaning everything up. 
And I looked at some of these pieces that were left over, which actually the mold had been, or the template had been done for some menorahs that I made for, <laughs> for several years. And I thought, oh my God, that looks like the Parthenon. Okay. And so it's kind of Nina Bono's version. Anyway, it's not finished yet. <laughs> it has a, a Greek, Greek stamp on it. But the piece that's on display that I just finished is on canvas and it has metal on it and all kinds of things. But I have these uh, under my desk here, which has been very greatly cleaned up for this little show today. <laughs> I have um, all kinds of colors. This is from that Matisse piece that I showed you. I just have all kinds of colors that are usually a little bit more organized, but I've been using them. And I've painted these, so you see the real vibrant colors. And then when I wanted to do the um, addition of those leaves for um, the art curtain for Vancouver, I found the exact colors that I had. And so it just took me a few minutes to go in here. This is the piece that I originally had. And what was difficult that took me most of the day was figuring out the dimensions for that because the, the tree wasn't in the center um, of the page. And last time we did an art curtain, it opened um, two pieces. Anyway, it gets complicated, but I love every aspect of it. Maybe the least favorite part is cleaning up, but <laughs> it looks pretty neat today. So. It looks pretty good. Anyway. Nina, I, I did have another question, but thank okay. you for answering that one. And this question is, you have such a rich, in-depth understanding of um, Jewish culture. Did that accompany your painting or was that something instilled in you early on in your life? I think it was instilled early on in my life but it really has been facilitated through my painting. I think one of my favorite books is called the Encyclopedia of Jewish Symbols. Mm. And um, every time I work on these, you know, like the date one, I was talking with a cantor from Vancouver in one of the Zooms that we were doing, we were talking about that particular piece. And I said, you know, I have symbolism in all of these, but what am I gonna do for the dates? And then I thought of that idea for the 70 aspects of, of God, uh, of the Torah. I think I Googled that. Google's really great. But um, yeah, I, I really like to put symbolism in it. And I've learned a lot by doing all of this. So I think I'm talked out. <laughs> Um, let's take a couple of more questions. We're getting sort of a bit long. So I see, uh, goodness, is her name Trish or? Uh, it's, Tricia, it's not Tricia. off. It's not completely spelled there. I have so enjoyed this. I knew I would from the moment I saw it in your newsletter. Thank you so much. And I wonder, it's, it's been recorded, am I right? So will it be available to us to send to others? Yes. Uh, yes, it has been recorded. Um, so and, we'll we'll post it in the next few days. And I can, and I'm free to send it to other people to enjoy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Love every bit of it. Thank you. Um, we have Debbie's hand up. Uh, please, Debbie. Debbie, you're muted. You were unmuted before. Go ahead and unmute again. Okay. I love your work. I saw it years ago and, and didn't realize it was new that I would be seeing. And then I saw that the, in your hallway, I guess, the tree of life and said, oh, I've loved that piece for years. But I'm wondering how much of your work is you've talked a lot about uh, commissions from people and them. How, how often do you take a break and just paint for yourself what's on your mind or what you're feeling that doesn't have anything to do with anybody else? Uh, not as much as I want. <laughs> Although that Matisse piece that I showed you, I've done two others since then and one was a few weeks ago. They both relate to, um, you know, can you open the top or second floor? I think it's the second floor. They both relate to swimming because um, I swim a lot and I really like the freedom of that. And during the pandemic, that's been the thing that I've missed the most. Try the next floor. There it is. I wanna show you a piece that I just completed in the middle of all of this. 
And I need to do this. These things are so painstaking that sometimes I need to do something that's just fun. So I don't know how many pieces there are in this, but it's another, it's a second underwater scene. And here you have somebody swimming at the top and then it has a lot to do, not only with the fishes that was developed in a prior piece like this, but um, you know, coral and uh, air bubbles coming up and uh, maybe I got a little carried away. <laughs> <laughs> but this was something that I was doing concurrently with working on these Torah mantles. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then also, this piece here, um, upside down, because I do have art trails coming up uh, in just, uh, what, a few months, and there's a lot of um, exhibit opportunities in different places. The Sebastopol Center for the Arts, who are the sponsor for art trails, have um, of show where we're ha each person is supposed to have one piece and um, I like to have a lot of variety so um, I think when I this this project I'm working on right now is going to take the next couple months but um, yeah I, I oh and there's some other pieces on the wall do you know you want to go over there or are we uh, sure. Nina have you ever considered producing wallpaper out of pieces like your underwater scene? No, but I see those as big, you know, I'm trained in architecture and I won't be happy <laughs> uh, until those are produced in tiles on the side, think of the, in a resort somewhere on the side of a pool wall, you know, gigantic. So here's something that I did. I'm a member of the American Guild of Judaic Art and there's there was an exhibition opportunity. Um, I forget what the theme was, through the generations or something. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can't hear Nina. She's frozen. She's frozen. Okay, I'm yeah. sure frozen. she'll come back yeah. in a minute. Oh, frozen. Ban bandwidth, yep. Okay, um, we'll give it another second and then we'll see what happens. So here's Dino and my engagement. Still frozen? Still frozen? We got you. I think you're back. Can you close, you close, you open the door. You... Okay, I hear Dino. But you not anymore. Oh. Kind of oh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. One is my mother with her siblings and mother, and here's me and my two kids. So these are things I do for fun, and it's kind of with tree background and all kinds of things. Okay. Um, I, I think that we, because of the technical issues that have just come up, I think that maybe we'll wrap up. Does Sandy want to come in and, and say a few words? Um, and uh, maybe I'll wrap this up officially. If you do have any last minute questions, feel free to type them. Um, but I do wanna turn this over to, uh, to Sandy and to Nina. Um, uh, so please go ahead. Well, I, <clears throat> I, I wanted to thank Iren. You should know that we have been figuring Zoom out for the last probably three hours to get to now. So thank you so much, Iren, for being the the goddess of technology to get us to this point. And um, I only sweated a couple of bullets, but uh, I don't like bullets very much. So, <laughs> um, and I've had the great pleasure to be here in this space and, and infused with uh, joyous Judaica. Uh, and this is really good. <laughs> we, we, had, we had a lot of fun. And Nina kept handing me things to eat. She so said, here's some energy, keep some energy. So. We had a we had a really good time. Thank you so much, and Dino. Thank you, thank you so much. And Thanks to the JCC for yes. doing this, and for all the people that attended. I hope you come see me soon. Yes. And I, I before friends. we sign off, I did want to mention that yes, this has been recorded, and just to reiterate that um, it might take us a couple of days, but we will put it up online on YouTube, so you can send that link to others. Um, it will be on the JCC's YouTube channel. Um, and I have to say, this was one of the most generous. Um, and, and interesting and engaging um, uh, uh, presentations that I've seen, uh, not just that it's ours, but Nina, thank you so much for your generous time. I know that we've all just been flabbergasted by how beautiful your home and your art is. So thank you. Well, 
Oh, you're welcome. The best Thank thing you. about this whole thing was it made me clean up my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. But also, <laughs> I, I ran. I have a quick question for you. Um, because we got through all these hoops to produce this this time, will it be easier next time? Do we know what we need to do? Um, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Short answer. Yes. Um, well, I think Short thank answer. you. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, and uh, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next time. I know that we have an event on Monday. So if you are at all interested to come to lunch and live harp music, um, please take a look at the JCC's website. We really hope to see all of you. Thank take you. Care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.